Welcome everybody to Ignite Humanity Live. I'm your host, Lady JB, and I'm so happy you are here because guess what? We are on location in Los Angeles. We are filming here with some of my favorite people on the planet, some of my friends, and some of the people that I'm co-casting uh, with in the new movie, Beyond Limitations. So today is gonna be a lot of fun, so I'm glad that you checked in with the show. Now, why are we here? Well, it's because we are igniting humanity. That's right, I love to show up every day, Monday to Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern so you can decide how maybe you can ignite humanity. Now more than ever, we all are responsible for things that we can do to ignite others' lives. And those things are little things. They're not huge things, but they make a huge impact. So each and every one of us has the ability to do something small for our fellow man, for our fellow woman, for our fellow friends, to make a big impact on humanity that is going to bring the world together. And I'm committed to doing this show because I want you to find find ways that work for you. And I bring you guests every day to talk about how we can ignite humanity and make a big difference together. Now, one of the ways we do that is through Ignite Moments. We all have Ignite Moments. In fact, it's the one thing I believe is the common denominator amongst us all. There are so many differences on the planet, but each and every one of us can connect to our Ignite Moment, that thing that creates tenacity and determination and perseverance in our lives and that becomes this amazing human connection amongst us all. And so when we talk about our Ignite moments, we feel more connected to each other. We feel more like the brotherhood, a sisterhood, and that is going to make a difference. I don't believe governments or education or politics or policies or more things to do is what's going to change humanity. I believe that us coming together is what's going to make the difference, and that's what this show is all about. Well, one of the ways that you you can ignite humanity is join us on our initiative as we are building schools around the globe and one of the things we're doing for February is having what we call bouquets of hope that means for $12 you could buy 12 bricks to help put us help put those bricks in our schools we need 35,000 bricks to build schools and we know that just $12 will buy 12 bricks and so for Valentine's Day and February we thought you might want to spend $12 and buy somebody a bouquet of hope just go to our website ignitehumanity.life backslash hope, you could spend $12 and we will send somebody a virtual bouquet of hope and you will ignite somebody's life in a school that we build somewhere in a third world country. If you want to be on our show, well, we want to hear from you. So go to ignitehumanity.life backslash share and tell us about what you're up to. So maybe you could be on the show like my guest that I'm about to introduce you to. Well, we're going to have a lot of fun because this is one of my favorite people on the planet. Someone I spend a lot of time with. We probably we talk almost every day. We really are doing big things to make a big impact. And my guest today, incredible uh, friend of mine, we, they call him the dream maker. And I wanted to introduce <laughs> you all. Tony, the dream maker, Dodi is all about super connecting. He's all about mentoring. He's all about producing. He's all about making big impact. And with today being idea day, we're going to hear some great day ideas from you. Welcome, welcome to the show. I love that. Thank you I'm so, so much. I'm so happy to have you here. I'm so happy to be here. I feel like we're just talking on a phone like we do, like you say, literally almost every day. Yeah, but my yeah. heart's kind of beating because yeah. I adore you so much. I and I, you, you know, I'm yeah. so grateful for the things that you do for me, oh. for our friends, for humanity, for the community. And so it it's wow. actually means a lot to me that you're here. Oh, I love you so much. You I know? love you. I, I would start by joking by saying I have that effect on women, yeah. but you know, my wife is watching. <laughs> exactly. Well, exactly. So and we love Christina. Yes, Absolutely. Yes, yes. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you. And love I wanted you, you to be here because I think people need to hear from you. Mm -hmm. They need to hear that we all can be, they call you the super connector mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we all can super connect each other. And that's yeah. really what's going to ignite humanity. And I like to yeah. think ignite moments creates a super connection, but Absolutely. what does super connector mean to you? That's a wonderful question. Uh, and I think the answer is, you know, it's the ability to find what people need, yeah. right? And just filling a gap. And when you fill the gap, right, at the end of the day, it's it's you're helping that person's dreams come true because you know this you're one person away from literally every single one of your dreams coming true right so i use the analogy i call it the bbd the business baseball diamond or it applies to any aspect of life when you have a baseball diamond you're the pitcher of, of your own life right your business fill in the acronym and uh you have a catcher right and then you might have a first baseman but then you might just need that shortstop right and that shortstop could be that golden glove winner once they're there 
you win a World Series, your entire life changes like that. So I think to me, that's what super connecting is finding the gap, what somebody needs and making that introduction in that specific zone of genius that somebody's lacking, so to speak. And then, you know, filling in that baseball team and, uh, you know, winning the World Series. <laughs> Do you feel like people need to choose the right people to be in the right bases of their life? hundred percent. You know, one of my earlier mentors, Oren Woodward said, you know, he said that, you know, you could have the right people on the bus, but sometimes they're on the wrong seat in the bus, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to have the right right people on the right seat of the bus. Perfect example, Michael Jordan, in my opinion, by far the greatest basketball player of all time. What happened when he went to go play baseball? Right. right. You know? Mm -hmm. so just, or golf. Was or, that him? Or golf. Or golf. <laughs> that, you know, that yeah. too. Very few can be ambidextrous, so to speak, and really mm -hmm. more than one thing. But everybody's really good at one, two, maybe three things. And 99% of the other things, they're not really that good at. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I always use the analogy, you're not going to call the mechanic to fix your toilet. You're not going to call the plumber to fix your car. Right? Right. Everybody has a zone of genius. And it's only finding who fits that niche that that, that that specific person needs to make all their dreams come true. Let's easy. go back to the idea of the bus. Because yeah. what about... You you being the driver of the bus, <laughs> driving your own bus, right? Well, I mean, I like to think of it as this, is like, you know, the coach or like the, the maestro, right? You know, he's not the one out there playing the orchestra, not the one throwing like the touchdown, like the QB, right? But he is also helping guide, right? Overseeing everything and just running the play just because he or she has that experience for, of doing so, mm -hmm. you know? And I like to think of myself as that proverbial coach or that maestro, just watching the beautiful people come together. You know, I tell people all the time in their cell phone, they don't realize they have tomatoes, they have onions, right? You're right? But they don't realize that they put everything together with the lettuce, they yeah. can have a salad, right? 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 You know, and sometimes there's just missing, you know, that one little vegetable to make it the best salad ever. Let me ask you, I mean, you are phenomenal at connecting people. You've introduced me to many people. I watch you introduce people to others. Why a passion for making these kind of connections? You know, six basic human needs and up top for me is contribution. Right. Um, you know, everybody wants significance, of course, and certainty. I'm very big on certainty as well, too. But, you know, once you get past survive, right, you go to thrive. Right. And so I. I am not, there's a lot of people out there that are, they kind of hold their contacts in and they don't let anybody get to anyone. But if we really truly want the world to be better for all of our brothers and sisters, right? Eight billion of us, you know, why would we not open up a door that's going to help that person to, you know, again, fill that gap and not only make their dreams come true, but everybody around them. It, to me, it's like just a positive ripple effect. And, you know, I say this in the movie and you've seen the trailer, right? Where it talks about, you know, basically I say you're one door hold away mm -hmm. with some people that you don't know, you know, from pulling that person off the bridge or one please and thank you. I love you mm -hmm. from stopping someone from maybe yelling at their wife that night or doing something bad or their husband or whatever that might look like. And, or you're one slanderous comment away from someone saying, you know what? Enough's enough, right? And doing something not good. And you always want to be the positive domino in someone's life and, and not, not the opposite. And so where's the fear come in? Because some people are like, well, I don't want you to meet my friends. I don't want you to know that person. <laughs> What's the fear that people have about connecting one another? I, I think it's a, uh, it's a security thing in the sense that, you know, people think that they're going to be circumvented and things of that nature. Uh, that rarely happens to me. You know, it really, really doesn't. You know, at the end of the day, it's I think, you know, the, the, the scriptures say, right, your name's worth more than silver and gold. If you can build your name to be like, you know, your reputation prestigious, you, so to speak, people realize like, oh my gosh, next week, this one might be with an A-list uh, celebrity or this one might be with whatever. You know, you, that's the running joke. You never know who I'm going to be with or someone like you, or like who are you going to be with, right, the following week. And so I, I think people get concerned because it's their own kind of introspective, you know, self-esteem issue, but they don't realize that honestly, like if they're, they're, there's no such thing as competition is really collaboration and it's a reframe and a mind shift. Yeah. It's true. And so for the folks at home, I mean, even like you're in the grocery store and you see a sale, you're like, hey, there's a sale over there, you know, mm -hmm. or you meet somebody in the, in the park and you're like, oh, go ahead. You go on the swing before me. I mean, there's yeah. lots of things that we can do yes, yes. that if we allow, actually, there's a flow of energy. We've talked about that yes, a lot, like yes. being in flow and flow does actually, you know, really ignite from the fact that when mm -hmm. we want to bring people together. Yes. I know that humanity now more than ever, we're connected through social media, yes. through, you know, the fact that we can travel, through the fact that we really rely on each other on a global scale. Yes. Where do you feel like humanity is going when it comes to connection? I feel like, you know, um, I think Tony Robbins says, right, there's more wisdom out there and never, uh, knowledge out there than ever before. People are, are, are drowning in, in knowledge, but starving for wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. So it's now discernment more than anything. You know, I forget what the accuracy that is, but now, but like in 2010-ish, it was something like the, you know, one, uh, 
one like basically Wall Street Journal like paper from cover to cover had more information than like 100 years ago that someone would receive in a lifetime, right? And that was like 2010. So you couldn't even imagine. I don't know what the accurate stat is. So I, I think it does come down to, like you said, you know, a word that I don't like to use, but, you know, I, I will, sh you know, use that word you used a, a, a lot of fear because people are a little concerned about what they don't know. But really, if, you know, and it's, there's that energetic, you used this term earlier, right? This energetic imprint that, if you let go of that fear and you really live by faith, because it's really two options, right? It's fear or faith, right? And if you live by faith, what happens when you realize that you like you let it go, that ripple effect really does reach out. And you don't know if you're four, five, six ripples away from coming back to like the teacher is teaching your daughter that day or your or your son that day or whatever it is. And you know, I, I joke down the road about maybe even creating a movie and showing some kind of ripple effect, the person, the person, the person, the right. person back to someone that they love. So I, I think people are moving overall in the right direction, but I think discernment is needed. That's such a good idea. I mean, think about it. If you ignited somebody's life and they ignited somebody's mm -hmm. life and that ripple continued on and it circled back yes. to igniting someone in your life who really needed it like somebody in your family who's maybe ill or suffering yes. or something you know yes. imagine the opposite mm -hmm. if you you know block off that person don't ignite mm -hmm. that person don't empower the next person mm -hmm. how does that person then come around and not empower somebody in your life that's needed that's a really really good point i yes. love that idea yeah yeah idea i know <laughs> exactly future exactly. project <laughs> <laughs> okay so give us another idea what are some of the ways that you feel that we need to ignite ourselves more because we always talk mm -hmm. about it's an inside job 100%. i mean you can't connect with other people if you don't feel connected to yourself. 100%. There are wonderful people out there. Um, you've had some on your show, like Kristen Connell, right? That are these wonderful neuroplasticity coaches, right? And they go out and they are able to help rewire the brain from a neuroplasticity level, very sciencey, right? Very truth proven, where people can get rid of, you know, what we've heard for many years from the Tony Robbins of the world, right? For 30 plus years of limiting beliefs and things of that nature. Once, like, you know, Michelangelo, when he created David, he said he just removed everything that wasn't David and David appeared, right? right? So it's a beautiful thing. Once you start to remove these blocks that you don't realize that you grew up with, you know, from newborn to seven, you're in data, right? So kids are just soaking things up. That's why people like Jim Quick put people into data to super learn, right? Elon Musk and those type people. But at the end of the day is that, you know, there are now strategies, you know, where you can be put into data with specialists and everything to super learn and unlearn, you know, not good things. And once you're able to, you know, rid yourself of these, you know, emotional, energetic bricks that you've been carrying around, you're now open. And when that happens, you start to see positive flow happens. And not only are you from a uh, cellular level really putting it out there like a micro vibration, you're also attracting that as well, too, because, you know, mm -hmm. like attracts like. You Absolutely. Know? And connecting with self. I mean, really, again, there's so many things that we can do. We've, mm -hmm. we've talked about this. You've heard it on the show many times. You have the ability to drive your own bus, to steer yes. your own ship, yes. to lead your own yes. orchestra, yeah. to write yeah. your own chapter. Yes. A lot of people are feeling like they're a bit helpless or they're just a leaf in a stream going where they're told. Mm -hmm. What would you say to inspire them? You know, I would say two things. Uh, I would say seek out someone that can help, you know, you viewer, don't break in the third wall here, uh, <laughs> do, do the work, right? To actually do the work to, and, and don't, you know, some people say, hey, we're grown up, right? I never say I'm a grown up. I'm a big kid. I'm 41. I'm a 41 year old big kid. Love Disney. As you know, we share that. We love that. And, and at the end of the day, you know, never gr grow up because the people that you see are of this fixed mindset say, oh, I'm all grown up. I stopped learning when I was in high school, right? But well, that's silly. You know, you always have to learn every day. So realize that there's more to learn. Okay, number one, and that there are skill sets that you can learn. But number two, realize that you, you, that there are people around you that can help fill that gap of what you need, but use what I call the power of ask. You know, it's not an ego thing, right? Literally like Lego, right? Let the ego go, you know, uh, to go out and ask for help in said area, you know? And it's no different. Like when I remember before I knew a lot of the names, right? And now in these films and what we do, we got to become a name, you know, thankfully. But, you know, I remember when I would put on like a CD of like a Les, like your buddy Les mm -hmm. Brown or something like that. I would picture me asking Les a question and him giving me like an eight hour answer, right? <laughs> and that was, and I'm learning, I'm learning you know, better than I would a Harvard professor, professor. Like I'm learning from the man himself, right? Or from the woman herself. I remember Susie Orman back and I used to always listen to Susie, right? And a lot of people that we had the privilege of becoming friends with. And then, you know, you, you become this person and you realize like, you know, that rarely does income succeed self-development, right? Because you have to succeed 
see self development wise to grow, think and yes. grow rich, right? Yes, yes. And it's not just about wealth; it's about every aspect of your life. Again, going back to Orin from earlier, you're absolutely like, right? I tell everyone before the end of the year, going into the year, right? Not just a vision board, a reality board, right? You know, where are you scale one to ten with faith? Scale one to ten, family, finances, fitness, right? Footprint, you know, which is your legacy, following who serves you while you're here, and you know, your fun and your friends, right? Where are you at scale one to ten? Because you can easily have a seesaw effect and have all the money in the world and everybody hates you, right? Or you can have all the money in the world, everybody loves you, right? But then you don't have your health, right? right. So it, it's that it's always introspectively, and you want to always work on yourself first, and you want to be like, you know, the the good old quote, you know. Uh, in regards to changing the world, you know, changing you, right? For, yes. Before you change the world, yes. you know, like like Gandhi said, exactly. change you, mm. right? And be the change. Be the change, right? But change you, I think, is the phraseology that is embedded in his actual quote. You have to change you to change the world. Be the change you. Tell me them the again world. because you said them really fast. Yeah, I get excited. One more time. Yeah. Faith. So there's your faith, right? There's yeah. your finances, right? There's your family. There's your fitness, which is obviously your health. There's your friends. There's your fun, which is you time. There's your following, which is who you serve when you're here there's your footprint your legacy that you leave behind right fantastic folks write those down yes. okay well let me rewind a little bit so yes. you have such a great outlook you have so much enthusiasm people are attracted to you they're Thank like you. a magnet <laughs> where did that come from how did that start what's the story what's the ignite moment thank you for that i love my family very much right uh and i came from three generations of um, basically, um, you know, they say generation curses is a very negative word, but we'll use that for the phraseology for the show. Um, and, you know, everyone had a child at a very, very young age, 19, and back in the 60s, you know, they didn't give you a TV show on MTV, right? When you had a child, you know, they put my grandma at home, right? And it was these generational curses, so to speak. So I decided at a young age that I wasn't going to drink or smoke. I was going to be absent to marriage and I was going to break those things. And I'm the oldest of seven at the time. I didn't know I was going to have six other siblings, but I had some at the time and I wanted to be like, just the person to to break that and i it, it's when i came into reality which was like sixth seventh grade-ish you know you, you start to become a little mm -hmm. bit self-aware you're going out of data into higher brainwave states you know and i i love my mom i love my stepdad very much who i was raised by and i love my father who i met in my teenage years which dodie came from my mm -hmm. should be my biological mm -hmm. name it's not but it should be my biological name and you're gonna laugh at this but because I didn't get certain things from my mom and stepdad and I love them where they're at. You know, we have to realize that because a lot of times we put blame right. on people. Like, and we'd say like Dr. Wayne Dyer, what did we say back in the day? He would say, bring me your mom. I'm going to treat her and then you're going to get better. Right. <laughs> you know, right. so I would watch kids you not in the 90s. I would watch Michael Jordan and I would watch this man win, 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 regardless of how they were down 104 fever. He'd go out and he'd win the game. Amazing guy. And I, I would I would look at this guy as a model for success and describe and I would implement that part of him into me. There was a wrestler, which I'm friends with a lot of the WWE guys now, so my heroes are my dear friends now, I had the privilege to work with them for years, but there was a wrestler named Shawn Michaels. He was uh, charismatic, he was funny, he was flamboyant. I was quiet and shy. He was not. The girls liked him, the blah, 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 right? And so I modeled my personality as I got older, being kind of quick and funny and witty, things like that. And then reading comic books, believe it or not, it instilled goodness into me. You know, the heroism of Peter Parker, where he wasn't a bazillionaire and he would go save the world. And the next day, J. Jonah Jameson, the newspaper guy, would write something bad about him and reframe everything in a bad way when he saved the world. But his humility kept him from saving the world, right? Mm -hmm. uh, kept him going to save the world. So that is why I... It sounds funny, but you don't have to learn from your parents per se. You take what's good, extrapolate what's good, leave out what's not great, right? And then become like better for the next generation and pull from the great teachers around you, which is, you know, life's a great teacher. And going back to the baseball analogy, like some people feel like, well, I don't have a good person in my life on home base and I don't have someone on first and second and, and someone to catch my mistakes. But mm -hmm. you're saying that you can find mentors and you can mm -hmm. learn from people. Yes. They don't have to be right beside you. They certainly don't have to be in the same home as you. Mm -hmm. And so that's a really great idea. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. <laughs> How to use other people. And I think now more than ever, I mean, I'm the same as you. I was listening to Tony Robbins on my my Sony Walkman I while I was that. going to college. I love that. Um, that those people can mentor you and support you and they don't have to be people right in your immediate ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the ways also that you can ignite humanity, folks, because people can learn from you. Yeah. 
Yes. Now yes. all over the world, people can have access to good messaging, and that's why we started this show is because Love we that. want good messaging. Share a little bit about the ways that we can express positive messaging because you have done so many amazing things, Thank and you. I think、you、that.、Too. People sometimes, you know, they glom on to the tragic, or they、mm-hmm. they get caught up in the victim story、mm-hmm. because that's more interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How do we keep sharing good content? You keep sharing good content by looking for what's good, right? So just to be very honest and very real is、uh, so two things. Two, so two quick points because you shared earlier footprint. How you listen to Tony?、Right. Tony created you. You're a name. Right. So many people look up to you. You're actually helping Tony in the sense that you're adding to his footprint when he's not here anymore. You're the next generation of him, right? So we're actually helping the people that have helped us, which is very interesting. We're carrying their torch.、Uh, but to your your point directly, you know, it's it's one of those things that、um, it's just kind of funny to to you know when you really really think about how that goes, it it just has to not play out the way it's supposed to. Because you do want to always search, and you do want to throw it out there. But I tell people before you go to bed at night, one of the greatest tips that was ever brought to me was the hour before you go to bed, and you're back in beta, so you're back being seven again,、mm-hmm. you know. And the seven year old doesn't know the difference between a stick and a unicorn. That's why they're so right. imaginative, right? Right. You are able to implement things into your 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 subconscious and your superconscious that we now know of your connection with source, with God, and for the next eight hours or so, marinate on that. And then when you wake up, things just start happening, right? And people could do. This at any time, at any moment, and I don't think people realize their power because we're taught something. And but it could be instantaneous. Like momentum begins in a moment. One phone call could change your life if you act on it, right? You know, I, I remember 2006. I had a phone call from one of my heroes growing up. It was Kurt Angle,、mm. and Olympic gold medalist WWE wrestler. I picked up the phone, flipped open the phone, and there's a poster from on the wall.、Wow. And that conversation changed my life. I got to help him, and he said I saved his career, possibly his life. Helped him wrestle till 2017, 11 more years. John Cena inducts him in the Hall of Fame after he trained Cena. And here we are now. We have such a good friendship. He killed my fear of people because I realized the Olympic gold medalist, one of my heroes growing up, was was no different than any other human being I've ever you know came across. So I, I think it's just people realizing that you are one person away, really, truly, truly knowing that for all your dreams come true. But then asking because everyone by the age of twenty one subconsciously knows two thousand people by first name. So when you meet、wow. someone, when you meet someone that you're not meeting just them, you're meeting two thousand people. That's amazing, and and think about like it's true. We had the opportunity to meet our heroes. We had the opportunity to become our own hero. Yes. And when you actually help somebody, or inspire somebody, or get to know somebody on that authentic level, which goes back to ignite moments, they really bring the authenticity.、Mm-hmm. You saw something far more in your friend Kurt than you did just when he was on the poster. Hundred percent. And you know, and another ignite moment. So I'll share with this.、Um, most people know, two thousand seventeen, I was hit by a car. All right, and I was down. For really bad for three years and not great for about five years, and you know, I had this even while being in bed for over a year. I had this hope and this knowing that there was out of eight billion people, somebody out there that understood this stuff, right?、Mm-hmm. Somebody out、mm-hmm. there, and they might be in Jamaica, they might be in Australia, <laughs> they might be wherever, somewhere, somewhere. And it caused us to move to Florida, which we met wonderful people like Kristen years later. I met a, a person through our congregation that helped me to go to Jamaica.、I、was there for a month working with a doctor over there, which helped me to.、Um, Reconnect with my buddy Rick Freshman, author one hundred and one,、uh, which brought me to Greg Reed and all those guys, right? Which、um, I think indirectly connected me to you, actually, which is funny.、Uh, but introduced me to Joe Dispenza, introduced me to the stem cell guys, Michael Berkowitz, got the stem cells. Like a chain reaction, a chain, a, a, chain, a chain, a chain, a chain, a、mm-hmm. daisy chain. I love that word, daisy、mm-hmm. chain. My good buddy Mike Peluso talks about it a lot, daisy chain. And the one person would bring me here, the next person would bring me here, the next person would bring me here, and. If I was not cognizant and conscious of the fact that these were not happenstance things, right? These were not coincidence, right? Like Dr. Dyer would say, original definition of coincidence is two coincident angles meant to be, right?、Yeah. It was a coincidence in the actual relative sense of coincidence. They were meant to be, but、um, you know, when you have perspective, where you lose that. Portion, you know, half a decade, you're able to realize that things that are maybe a one and two in your life, you know, are not a nine and ten. And where maybe before, you know, you get cut off at a traffic light, and you're like, oh my gosh, the day, da da, and you make it like an eight or a nine, and really it's a negative two, right? You know,、exactly. if, if even that. So you realize your barometer, what actually affects your proverbial Richter Richter scale, doesn't really, you know.、Um, 
you know, jump up as much. And it gives you contrast. And I think people need contrast. Yeah. You know? They do. Yeah. Well, before we close, I want to ask you one little thing because you yes. love to have fun. I we do. love to have fun together. Yes, we yes. are always having fun with our friends. Yes. We're coming together and doing fun things like this in Los Angeles. Yes, yes, yes. What's the power of fun? Ooh, the power of fun. It's a wonderful question. I think the power of fun, it, you know, fun in work or right, it's just a neural association. It's the emotion you attach to it. I say that I get to talk to friends all day. Yeah. And sometimes it's 12, 16 hours of talking to friends. But you know, we have, <laughs> right. we have, we have some late, late nights. Sometimes but, I'm like, it's bedtime for you. Yeah, I know. It's like, go to sleep. Your dinner's been cold. Christina's texting right. you. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's the neuro association of what you associate the fun. Some people that's watching a TV show and some people it's going to Disney and some people it's building schools, right? Mm -hmm. It's whatever your neuro associate the fun. So define your fun, but define honestly all your acts of life, I would say. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. How can people find you? Get to know more about you. Oh, thank you so much. So uh, we can watch our movies. Beyondlimitations.com. Right. <laughs> going to be on Amazon Prime soon. And also the website is screenmakernation.com, dreammakernation.com. Or you can reach out to her too. She knows you pretty well. I love it. Thank you so much. I love you, you know, so much. I adore you. Thank you. I adore you as well. Well, folks, there's so many things to unpack in that conversation. And what I want to share with you is you can always go back to our website, ignitehumanity.life backslash watch and find out more about what, about what Tony was sharing and catch all those fabulous tips <laughs> and ideas because there were so many baked into this wonderful conversation. Well, we love having you here with us by virtual or live or wherever you're watching us on your tablet, on your phone, on your computer. But if you would like to be sitting right here beside me or be on one of our virtual events, please reach out to us at ignitehumanity.life backslash share and fill out our type form and you could be a guest on the show. If you'd like to know everything that we're doing at Ignite Humanity, go to our website, ignitehumanity.life and you can check out our documentary, our docu-series, our book, and all of the things we're doing to ignite people, including our schools. IgniteHumanity.life backslash hope is where you can go buy bricks of hope and every single dollar you donate will go into our schools. One dollar buys one brick. And if you're feeling like Valentine's and you're feeling like giving out flowers, we have an initiative right now called Bouquets of Hope. For $12, you can share a beautiful bouquet with somebody you know. Well, if you would like to know more about being in one of our books and sharing your Ignite moment, again, go to our website, ignitehumanity.life, and you can see the many books we have coming up in our new series coming out throughout 2023. Well, we love having you here, and I just want to remind you, you have the power to connect, not only with yourself, but so many other people. Connection is what's going to bring us con together. Connection truly is going to ignite humanity. There's, there's technology, there's policies, there's government, there's so many things, but I will say, when we connect with one another, when we truly see someone for who they are, when we create friendships and we support people, when we uplift them, when we be the back catcher in their lives, we make a big difference. And that's the difference that you have the power to make right now, today, in your life and somebody you know. So go on and ignite somebody's life and we'll see you here tomorrow. Now, more than ever, we need to come together to connect with one another. We need to feel the truth in who we are and let go of everything that's happened in the past. We need to empower every person on the planet and awaken hearts, enliven souls, come together, laugh, play, rejoice, connect, create, and love. It's time to ignite humanity. We want you to be a part of something that will impact the future for everyone. We want you to tell your story, share your Ignite moment, show people who you truly are. Be a part of igniting humanity and making a difference in the world and all of our futures. <laughs>